Right, so this paper is actually not that recent, but I was made aware of it by What's Piquilo, who you might follow on Instagram or Twitter. Anyway, the point of this is like just to talk about the different types of VO2 max intervals that people do, and maybe that there's a new style that could increase the time uh, that you spend over 90% of VO2. Now, we're gonna go through the paper um, and I'll kind of explain roughly. So this is this is the abstract. Um, so the basic idea is what I've said. 12 cyclists um, perform three high intensity interval training sessions. Um, <clears throat> one of them is like the classic three minute on, two minute off, which is pretty standard. One is like 30, 20s, okay, more. It would have been better if it was 30, 15s, but anyway. And then this other one is like reducing the high intensity, uh, high intensity decreasing interval training, which which we'll see. Um, so the results are basically saying time over 90% VO2 max was greater in this new interval session than in all the others by actually a lot. You know, this is this is significant, um, but we'll, we'll get onto it. And then I guess the question is why over 90% of VO2 max? Well, that is where most people think the adaptions around increasing your VO2 max uh, occur. So you want to spend as much time over 90%. Uh, for most people, you don't have access to VO2 max uh, testing, so people use heart rate as a proxy for that, which generally is pretty good. So basically, you want to spend as much time at close to, to uh, max heart rate as possible. Um, so you can see again here, it's been shown to improve VO2 max. You need to have it within 5-10% to of your VO2 max, which mm -hmm. makes sense. So anyway, I think first of all, talking about this study, I want to go uh, talk about the participants because I think that's actually, for me at least, what really drives how important the study is because uh, then you can see who they're testing. So first of all, it's over 12 people. That's a bit disappointing. That's not that many. It's, it's, it's okay for a sports science, uh, you know, paper, but it's not, it's not unreal. And anyway, so their average age of 41, again, not too applicable uh, to a lot of the people, you know, I coach or whatever, but you know, maybe for the, the for the average person, it's okay. Large age range is also not ideal. Twenty nine to sixty two, like a twenty nine or a sixty two year old, physiologically, I don't think is mega similar. They're quite heavy as well, which is kind of fine. You can see heart rate. Um, the the main issue is this: the, the CP is two fifty four. That's just not high enough. Like for to be honest, the average weight is seventy six kilos, two hundred fifty four. That's just not. That's, even if it was like the lightest person here, sixty six kilos and they were doing 280, okay, that's all right. It's a real low level in my opinion, um, and they're not what I would call well-trained. Um, I don't think uh, this is study, this study is more for like recreational cyclists or like low level racing than like elite cyclists, which is what I think they called it. Um, so anyway, I, I think the reason why this is important and the reason I want to talk about it is because if your critical power, which is you know similar to threshold, it's a little bit um, higher, it is so low. I just think too much stuff can increase it. So, you know, I just don't think they're well trained. So I think a lot of the studies are not going to be as useful. Um, but anyway, okay, we'll we'll see why. So this is only a measure of VO two max. So th this is how they basically calculated all their CP. Again, this isn't really too it too ex too important and how they calculated their VO two max and um, VCO two max, which is fine. Again, it doesn't. This stuff is not too useful. Um, in order for the results of it. So we'll, we'll go through here and, and this is kind of more the way, another thing that's interesting and, and way it's not necessarily the same as that you prescribe, which is that all of these are done until volitional exhaustion of the subject, which means uh, when they are tired. And that therefore creates a large mental part of it. And I don't know if that is the best way of doing it. Um, but anyway, what you, it, what we can see is the 30 20s were done like that. Then the, the new interval, so this is the one they were testing, uh, three minutes high intensity, two minutes low intensity, two minutes high intensity, one minute 20. And so it's, it's always, as you can see here, a three to two ratio, and it just goes down. Now, again, this is repeated until volitional exhaustion of the subject. So again, it's like you do one set of that, then you'd rest and then see how many times you could do it. The other one is, is three minutes on, two minutes off, which is a pretty classic one again. Um, and again, repeated until, so you can see here, this is, um, the, the longer, this is the, sorry, short intensity efforts. Um, and you can see kind of 90% of VO2 max here, where you can also see the power, um, and volume option is on the left here. So I'm pretty sure this line is where people are. So you can see like the time, the early on, these guys doing 30, 20s are not getting above this 90% of VO2 max. They're obviously spending a significant proportion 
after like 400 seconds, uh, which is what, like seven, no, yeah, seven minutes. So over seven minutes, and again, I, that seems kind of rogue to me um, that you would do it in that sense because, um, yeah, you know, it's like, I, I don't really know people who do that. I mean, I think normally you do these shorter and higher intensity to kind of crack up the VO2. Um, these are the high intensity, and you can see here, like, the first effort here, so let's say on the power, again, you can see the power on the right-hand side, so these people are doing similar-ish power, um, and because you're spending, like, uh, three minutes um, at this intensity, obviously, you're, like, your time at VO2 max is going to go mega high, then the rest here is only two minutes, and then you can keep it, and because, I guess the argument is, is that because the power here is going to stay the same, but you're doing decreasing intervals, um, that you can then actually sustain it and keep the 90% VO2 max, well, if you compare to these ones, well, the issue here is actually people just didn't seem to be able to do more than like two efforts. So again, that's not really very accurate in my opinion because like, okay, yeah, they're doing, I believe slightly more power, but like if you're doing three by two, like for sure you're gonna do more than one effort. So again, it's kind of not the ideal thing. Um, so I guess, again, it's kind of just like, well, what's going on here? Um, I'm not, not mega happy. So if we look at the incremental CP again, um, I don't know if really this is too important. I think we will be skipping this. So this is where the results are. Um, so you kind of have time, uh, the total time, and then also obviously the time over 90%. So you can see the 30-20s were 183 minutes, 312, 179. Um, and then you can also see like uh, the effort level, which is actually quite um, useful. Oh, do they have effort level? They should have effort level here somewhere. I'm trying to see where it is. Uh, oh, maybe not. But effort level is also actually something that I do think is quite useful. Then you can see the amount of energy done over critical power. This is actually all quite similar as well. So in terms of like, you know, venting, obviously that's higher, but, um, and then the the mean percentage of VO2 max, again, you can see the three minute, two minute ones are the worst. Um, but then, yeah, we will keep scrolling down. Um, and then here again has the time over 9% VO2 max. Um, but I just, I just don't really understand because it's like, well, they just haven't done the same amount of effort. So anyway, then we look here um, and then we'll go down to the kind of discussion, which I think, again, is useful. So what it says here is that the, the program is three, minute, three minutes instead of 30 seconds. Um, and then it's then going to get you to an already higher um, percentage of VO2 max, which, again, does make sense. But what we'll see here is our results seem to contradict results from the previous studies um, run standard done them show that comparing some match high intensity protocols, those with shorter intervals listed as lower VO2 and the exercise suggests that maybe the longer, maybe longer when shorter intervals are used. And then also they were saying here um, that the shorter intervals um, was lower after 30 minutes of exercise. And then the reason they think that is potentially um, due to the fact that these people are not trained as much. Um, and I think this is the kind of key point. This discrepancy may be attributed to the different protocols used and a higher fitness level of participants. So the VO2 is like 10 milliliters per kilogram per minute higher, which is pretty big. But if we, again, read read this part here, they're comparing three cycling high intensity protocols in which the intensity work bouts were separate in maximal aerobic intensity. So what they did was like 30 15s, um, and this, the shorter interval times led to a longer um, time of, until there was exhaustion, which I think is therefore, in my opinion, why this study is not that useful, because I think the 30 15s is just such a different interval. And I think maybe, this study is decent and I think it does maybe you, you start to think maybe we should be doing different intervals um it does kind of make sense but then at the same time like I'm kind of skeptical uh in some ways just because of the lower the vo2 max um that these people had and also the fact um that uh in in my opinion they just didn't really do like the three minute two minute like, like just look at the the time is 400 seconds and these people are doing 770 seconds and you might say oh it's exhaustion but like you're clearly doing something wrong because the, the three minute, two minute, that should be good. Um, and also I think the other the other argument here is that, which is what Ronstadt did, is that if you do a 15 second spike here, so let's say so we do a 15 second spike at 120% of threshold, no, sorry, 140% of threshold, something wild, that's going to spike your heart rate and then it just keeps it high the whole time. So again, it's, it's kind of interesting. What I do think though, know, maybe the conclusion of this study, which I think is what I'm going to end this video on, is that in less trained people, people maybe who are newer to cycling, this is a more efficient way of doing VO2 max efforts and maybe easier mentally as well because of the fact 
that ultimately you do not have to do it gets easier because you're doing shorter efforts and so yeah i think you know will i give this a go on people i coach maybe um you know i kind of see i think maybe if people are struggling a lot with vo2 max sessions like completing six by three or or four e20s maybe i would um but i do think it's kind of like maybe not uh optimal um you know for for people who are who are stronger and also i don't think they compared it necessarily the kind of intervals i would expect to be compared but anyway i hope you enjoy this video cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next one